Ready, folks. Just getting set up to go. There's not much um, new stuff, so I'm just going to jump straight into the CAD work in a sec. Let me just um, get things set up here. Fuels. Right. Mm, CAD. That's good. Dashboard. Uh, oh. I need to make that a bit smaller. How is everybody? I hope you've had a good week. My week's been okay. Um, right, cat down up and need the um, Right, let me just switch straight over. So, uh, this by the way, we'll come back to this in a sec. This is the latest um, carrier board for amalgam. So, uh, let me use the cursor here. So, over the top, this part. Let me this part over the top here that is where the amalgam board sits and then um, below that we have uh, well, one of the things that we looked at having was you know, down here. Uh, this was the uh, um, I think this one was the Bluetooth and um, IO expansion. So both of those sit on top of the carrier, and then underneath. Now let me get rid of that. Underneath we have effectively four tiles in quadrants effectively. So what I want to do today, so that's I've I've got the template for the um for the tile as a carrier. Which is sitting it, these pads are on the bottom of that carrier board. And what I want to do today is uh, get the uh, template done for the tiles, and then we'll just knock up a, a tile as well. It's all about the signals, perhaps, and then um, we can come back to this. Let me just switch. How are you doing, folks? Anyhow, let me know what you've been up to. This week, just while I sort this out. Hmm. 
Oh, my chair is squeaky again. I need to. Sorry. Lock it. Hi, Laurie. Oh, you've had your second jab today, have you? Wow. When did you have your first one then? Was that back in Jan or something? What did you have? Did you have the uh, AstraZeneca or the. Um, the Pfizer, Feb 12. Yeah, I had mine in um, last month. My first one, but I won't get the second one until later. Yeah, they're a bit closer together as well, aren't they, the Pfizer ones? They go the full 12 weeks with the AstraZeneca. But uh, the gap is shorter, I think, with the Pfizer one. Right, let's just switch over. So uh, this is the uh, schematic for the um, for the um, micro tile, if you like, or the tile that goes underneath. And above top, well, almost right. You can see I've got the carry here. Um, so what I want to do is associate a new template with this as well. So what I can do is I start with probably best to one minute. So I'm just thinking, what polarity is that? So that is going to be female. Um, right. Okay. Let's start with this. What I want to do is I copy that. So that shows, wait a minute, let me have a quick think here, so if that's the carrier, Just um, check something here. Just want to check the pinouts. Make sure I've got it the right way around. Just checking the uh, pin order here, just trying to get my head around it. So, 39 would be ground, be this one, and then 38 below it, in case it's above it.
Bear with me, I'm just doing some gen, um, mental gymnastics here on the orientation. So 26 and 1 are at the top on here, 50 and 25. So I'd effectively need, so if I, if I was to put that on the bottom there, as is. <clears throat> I've just mirrored that completely. I've got a couple of choices here as well. Um, so, what we probably need to do. Uh, Right, let's just do the, let's just do a new package. LP, uh, No, that's not what I wanted to do at all. No. Now, um, let me just look at where the pin numbers are here. So, 50, 25 here. Um, so, if those were on the, on the same side, We'll try to connect that up as is. Go around that way and then it will flip. Mm 
Actually, what I think I need to do here is get all of these. Oh, hiccups. Excuse me. They're actually central. Where are we? Yeah. Let's just use. So, uh, if that was going to go on here, then. 1525 are here. What that was, so if I make that the bottom here, then flip that end over end. So 26 and 1 be there. But they'd be round the wrong way. Hold on. Right, I see what I've done. I probably need to um, rotate it. Oops, grabbing the wrong point now. Basically, And now when I flip that over, right, let's just line this up first because this is wrong. Okay, and then what I need to do, so I need 15, 26, and I need to rotate them, so that's what I need to do. Twenty-five. Yeah, so what I need to do is I need to mirror each one of these. Which what I need to do. Mm 
bit of laborious. There might be a group way of doing this, but I don't know. If you do the normal group, it tries to mirror it as a group. Let me to go down to replace. Okay. And Okay, so let's just save that. So if we go back to the uh, new tile, um, what we then need to do is we need to add in. So if I look at this one. Wait, what's going on? Shift starting. Oh, that's a very great. Are they not connected? Oh, yeah, I didn't finish connecting these. I think we check the numbers. Oh, those are the shields. Surely. Hold on. Let's see where they are. Oh, I missing is it just the four? Forty, forty-one, forty-two, and forty-three. That's very odd. Those four aren't connected. But it seems to think it's all connected here, which is all that odd. And not. Okay, how many got here? One, two, three, four. Sorry. This is taking so long. I seem to have left four pins unconnected on this. I thought I'd connected them all up, so I'm a bit worried because I've missed something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine. 18 in total. Um, and then how many have we got here? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. That isn't right. Eighteen, nineteen, 
3.4 u plus 18, 19, 43 and 44 u plus Well, that's very strange. That's 18 and 43. Hmm. Okay, I, I should explain what I'm doing here. If you look closely at the top um, here, we've got a uh, 50 row, uh, 50 pin in two rows of 25. Uh, 1.27 inch connector on the tile. Now the center pins are used for the signals and then the outer sets of pins or a number thereof like 14 for each potential voltage for the um, high current side of things. So there should be 14 For V plus, 14 for V minus, and the rest should be as you see them here. And then in in, in the uh, in the diagram here, uh, as you see, it goes from PS1 to 14 and 19. 19 to 14, that's a bit odd. So multiple connections go to these points, so they're appended to the same pin. But, for some reason, some of these pins haven't been set up right when I did this. So if I look at V+, plus, the V- minus goes P1 to all the way through to P7 and then 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, let's double check that. 32, right, and then bottom ones should go from. Um, to 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, which isn't very helpful. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, yeah, and 44, 25, 26. That all looks right. The naught volt ones are right. How oh, very strange. I seem to have four left over. I probably miscalculated something. How many digital pins have I done? Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Oh, could be seven. Let me rename it. Okay, and then. Uh, SISO
and then SEL and SCK, SEL and SDA, SEK, TS. Yes, yeah, it's connected. So I've still got four pins that are unused. Okay, that's going to be fun. Might have to go back and change that. I clearly undercounted them. Uh, those can be used as power, it's not a problem. Oh, I know what I did. I'm leaving those not connected because. That gives me a gap, but those aren't the right ones. Ah. 42 and 17 would be. No, 43 and 18 would be. 43 and 18. Oh, what joy. Right, I'm going to leave that for a bit because otherwise we'll be here for the rest of the day. I'm just going to add the new one in and then I will fix that. Because we just need to get on with doing the actual design. So let me connect this up. Okay. Pum, pum, pum. Right, CS1. Ah. <sighs> uh. B minus is CS1 P7. B minus is PS1 to P7. And it's also Twenty six through to thirty two, twenty six through to thirty two, twenty six. Right, good, and then V plus is nineteen through to twenty five. <clears throat> Nineteen through to twenty five. Nineteen through to twenty five. And uh, forty four through to fifty. Forty four through to fifty. Uh, okay. Then let's look at where we start. We go free volt then ground, don't we? Free volt and then ground. So we missed two down. CS is P33. Yes, P thirty three. Uh, three volt three is P thirty eight. 
That's a quick way I could do this. Hold on. You just cheat and take a screenshot, and I won't have to keep going backwards and forwards between these. Um, <laughs> so what you've been up to folks anything interesting uh, say directly opening image I guess that's right Out. Right, so where was I? Yes, yeah, so A0 is a 36, 36, A1 is A37, uh, A0 is A8. B1, B9, B2, B3, B11, B4, B12, B5, B13, B14, and grounds go to uh, thirty nine. Yeah, that's not there, let's do SO. SO goes to sixteen. SI goes to seventeen. Uh, CS goes to thirty three according to this. Uh, SC plays for 18. SC is 34. And SCL 35. Here you go, guys. Uh, ground goes to 39. And you get the zero right stuff. Then the others I leave. Cool. So, right, so we can actually start on it now. Let's just get rid of that for a moment. Get that out of the way. Right, let's switch back to the CAD. Um, Need to switch to Cinetic, but we need to change this to look at the circuit. Let's create a new one. And uh, let's just save this as create a new folder here. Let's call this one basic PWM. Uh, 
Not, uh... Okay, right, so first thing we need to do is just update our reference to the library because I've just changed it. And we need to add a tile. Do, 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 do. I'm not sure how long I'm going to do the uh, stream today. Let's see how I get on. I'm a bit knackered. Hold on. Uh, and I want to do the tile version. So let's place that in here. We need some motor controllers. And I'm going to use the uh, on semi ones. These are great little ones for small um, devices. So what have we got here? Just put two in for the moment. Um, just change the size of this slightly so it better fits on the screen. Zoom in a tad. So we have eight channels of these. This should be a nice simple one to begin with. So let me just go through the pins that we've got here as I tag them. Um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I have on each tile is eight digital pins, which you should be able to see are actually incorrectly labeled. Let me just go and fix that actually. Whilst I remember Make it a little bit more readable. Change it because I want to show the pad number on there. It's just annoying now that I don't need it. Let's change this to um, eight to seven. So I'm starting from zero. So 
So you turn to changes, and you update the changes in here. That's better. Um, so what we have is we have eight digital pins D0 through to D7. So those are going to correspond to these here. So I'm going to just let's just label these. We're going to use those to drive the um, oh, that's annoying. to drive the motor inputs. Now the I, I'll show you actually what the um, chip is that we're using here because it's quite important. So we're going to have um, so we start at zero. So let's just do um, M one. Now let's do M a one. M A two M A three M A four and then we're on to M B because there's four inputs for each motor controller. Um M B one uh M B two B three M B four. And we need to do similar on here. These are great for driving like little small motors. So you're making like toy robot type things rather than industrial robots. I'm definitely going to do a tile with these because this is great for playing. You can also use these to drive the step of motion. I'll go through that as well in a sec. So what did I say? Oh, I need label tool. Label. This would be M A one. Make those M A two. M A three. M A four. The lines that we're connecting up here are the ones that are connected to the FPGA. So these are FPGA IOs. M B one. M B two M B three M B four okay. those a bit close at the moment so we can see what's going on. Get it together for a moment. So I'm going to need to add in now connector to the outside world. So if I do this at a 0.1 pitch, I can use something like a Molex connector, for example. Those are quite common, these motors. 
Um, uh, what do I need? I need corn molex. Corn molex. Where have you gone? I am getting blind for classic corn. I guess what we can use here is something like that, maybe. Do I want to do them in twos or fours? Let's do them in. Hmm. Do fours to start with. <clears throat> let's just connect those up. So let's connect out the outputs to the um, voters. Let's quickly. Quickly look at the board. So, what we'll be talking about here is something like this. Mm, a minute. Oh look, I have to change the order on the FPGA, otherwise I'm creating a routing nightmare for myself. So these work nicely in terms of where the tracks are going to have to go, right? But look, if we look carefully at um, connection to the GPIO, they're all twisted. So what we can do here is um, change the order, basically. Um, I like to keep these numbers consistent here. So let's change. Let's just swap these around. Um, so that will be four. That will be one. That would be two. And that would be three. I'm just changing them around on a schematic. You should see them lining up on the um <clears throat> On the PCB, hopefully, if I'm doing it right. Four, three, one. I had a 50 50 chance of getting it right. Two. And then do three. Okay, so that looks a lot neater. So that works quite well. So let's just show you what these motor drivers are. These are very simple ones. Um, they're kind of handy um, for moving little like, toy robots around and stuff. They drive small motors. Um, let me get the data sheet up for these. Bear with me. And you can have a look.
if I can bring this up. Just bring the browser up, hold on. Oh, hi, I post. How are you doing? Break for a tea. Um, I'm just focusing in on some on a like uh, micro tiles. Um, I just created the template in Eagle for the micro tile, and now we're just building a little motor driver one for like toy robot stuff. Glad to hear you good. Are you having fun playing with black ice? Very good. Okay, so let me just explain these little chips. I've used these before. Uh, they're great for driving very small motors. So this you can use to drive, say, um, oh, let's have a drink. I can grab it in a minute. Uh, to drive, where's my motor box gone? Oh, yeah, I should show you this. Um, hopefully it will drive these as well. I got this from, um, this is relatively low cost, I got this off Alley. So there's a chassis. It's great for making a small um, little bot. Uh, and that comes with some of these motors. Now if you look at these, these have got the uh, right angled gearing on them. So the motor actually goes into this and the yellow bit's actually enclosed gearing. And then there's some correctly sized, um, they have a kind of D, I don't know if you can see it, they have like a D profile on the end, as do the uh, McCarran wheels. And those McCarran wheels will go straight on there, I believe. A little push and shove. And these motors effectively go into the side like that with the uh, axle going out. And you can even put something on the other end of the other axle. I mean, these are only cheapy, cheapo motors, but for, you know, learning some basics, they're quite good. So those are kind of cool. These are quite uh, interesting ones. I've used these before, but it's McCarnum versions. And then you get a whole bunch of screws and stuff that go with it. It's kind of nice. So I'll have to put one of those together at some point shortly. So I posted saying it's quite a step up for my tiny FPGA. He's talking about black eyes here because he just received his. Uh, they're a bit, they are bigger than I expected. Well, to be fair, anything's going to be big compared to the tiny FPGA because the tiny FPGA was so very tiny. Let's face it. It was teeny tiny. It was based on a, wasn't it based on a wafer scale level chip? And he did something funky with the pins.
I'm going to have to go and grab some water. And then I will be back. We're carrying on. Um, I'll leave you just for a couple of minutes, but let me um, leave you on an interesting. So this this little DMOS based um, motor driver only out, outputs you know small motors up to like an amp or something. You know it's not for driving power um, powerful ones, but it does so quite efficiently in terms of the number of IOs you need. So each one of these little um, chips. It's capable of driving two coils. So if you look at its uh, the way it's laid out, it can drive two separate motors, or it could drive two separate coils, um, which is what you'd have in a stepper motor. So one of these chips can do a basic stepper drive in half step or full step, or it can drive two small PWM motors like the ones I just showed you. Yeah, it shows you, you know, there's the, driving it two PWM motors, and there you're driving, you know, a single stepper motor. But you only need the four input controls, which is good. Um, and if you really want to have a look at that briefly, this is the uh, truth table. Given whatever inputs you've got, what happens on the outputs? Right, I'll be back in just a sec. Bear with me. It'll be a couple of minutes. Time opportunity for a comfort break.
Right, back folks. Um, I post so um, there's very little step of precision in these sorts of things because they're very basic um, because you're only doing full step the step precision will be the step size on that motor it's not micro stepping not that sort of driver I do have some uh, I do have some dynamic ones as well, so I'm going to do a dynamic step on one. So we will do a stepper driver one as well. But specific for stepper drivers. That's not what I'm working on today on this diagram. Sorry, on this time. But whilst I'm here, I will show you. Um, one of the ones that I intend to use to do a kind of stepper motor tile for micro stepping is the 226 T the trinamic ones. Oh, this is really slow. These ones. And these are really good stepper drivers. So I will do a tile with those on them as well. Um, where's the data sheet? Oh, it has this cool step, which is good. There we go. Stealth chop. So it does silent mode operation, but it's not silent, but it's, it's quiet for steppers. Steppers could be a bit noisy, particularly if you full step them. They're a great chip. They have this interesting optional UART based control and feedback mechanism as well, which is quite nice. And you can use it as a one wire thing, and you can select which one you're talking to, which is quite interesting the way they've done it. So, if you compare that to the Austrian micro type ones, for example commonly used stepper ones that you see in um, 3D printers and stuff. These are uh, a little superior, I'd say. 
And I think, one minute, does it say how many micro steps you can do on this? Smooth running, 256 micro steps. It's incredible. But it also does stall detection and stuff like that as well, which is kind of cool. So I will do one based on that, but that's kind of another day. So for the moment, back to regular um, layout. Let's just turn that off again. Go on here, that should now be straightened out. So we've got two of these chips. So this little tile will be able to drive four stepper motors, which will be good enough for that kind of little um, chateau here. That takes four of the Meccanums. Um, four wheeled car, yeah. Oh, um, let me see if I can find the link. Hold on, I can show you guys. Let me see if I can find the alley link where I ordered this from. So, just as a kind of learning and play type thing, uh. Hold on. No. Uh. Hmm. Need to log on here. Orders. Yeah. I'll turn the browser on so you can see this. Uh, so there, that's a kind of chassis from AliExpress. When it's uh, when the wheels are fitted and stuff, very simple. What it will do is a kind of good little base. Yeah, they call them Macarnum wheels, isn't it? And you can put something on top like this, but I'm, I'm not bothering with that. I'm just going with the straight, you know. There, you can see how the motors fit in. It's all quite simple. I just needed something basic. I can send a link for that hopefully. We just need something to play around with to start with. Right, uh, back to the motor. Oh, my head's really not with it today. Turn the browser off. There we go. Back to our PCB. Um, let's just revisit the schematic because uh, we also need to do the. Um, power and stuff. Uh, so the VCC and ground, VCC and ground, let me just double check, VCC, power supply, four to six, 16 volts in this case. So this is like M plus, let's add that in, and then minus uh, the
V plus. Connect to that. Connect to that. Connect to that. Just gonna shift down like that. And then we need a V minus. Oh, I must have broke clear. And that's different from ground in this case. So these are the um, high current supplies on that 50 pin connector. So the motor has its supply. Ground and V minus will effectively be connected together. But they can be isolated on the tile. However, you've got to be careful about mixing different tiles if you're using isolated and unisolated tiles. But it is possible to do that. Uh, the other thing we need to do here is, um, well, I don't need the V plus plus yet. Um, let me just go through these signals again. So we've got the FPGA signals, which we've already used. Um, so every tile has eight uh, VGA signals, bidirectional, generic um, FPGA I.O. pins. Uh, similar really to a, a PMOD in that sense, a double PMOD, um, where you'd have two lots of four. So you've got a similar capability as you would on something like a PMOD. Um, the other thing you've got is an SPI. That's useful. Um, so, for example, if you're talking to a motor driver, that may be the way that you want to um, set the various parameters on the motor drivers. Um, so, if you're doing a brush motor, uh, sorry, brushless motor driver or something. And then we've also got SDA and SCL. So if we need I squared C, we can use this to do any number of things. We could use it to do identity of the board. We could use it to connect to a peripheral on the board. Um, likewise with the SPI, really. So if we needed to add more A to Ds, for example, or maybe want to add a DAC or some other peripheral that was SPI based, it's easy to add that on. So unlike the PMOD, you don't get an SPI channel that comes with each, each of the connectors. Uh, and you don't get I squared C either, but you do on, on on a tile. And then each tile also gets to analog. Uh, sorry, these should actually be called MX0 and MX1. Let me correct that. Because these are uh, these are connected to the microcontroller, and you can either use them as digital, or you can use them as analog. Save that, update the library so it picks that change up. Must I remember? There we go. <sighs> Might need to change the size of this as well because it's not reading very clearly with the V plus and V minus. Naught volt here is always going to be ground, so let's just add those in. Uh, must we remember <clears throat> and that's where that's where these screw holes go down through um, 
because we need solid mechanical attachment to the um, to the board to connect to the carrier. I've kind of been through this before. So on here, that's what these screw pieces are for, and those get grounded. I mean, you can isolate them if you want, but I prefer to ground them. Okay. So what else could we do? We might. One thing that you might do is you is is expose those mixed signal connectors. Uh, the reason that you might want to do that is it could be useful for things like an end stop or any number of other functions on the board. So let's go back. I'm just going to add in uh, a connector here. Uh, I wonder, I'm just putting this down there, but I might, this might be a bit, um, maybe the wrong size. worried about the spacing of these I might need to double check you have to leave a gap between these if I recall because the connectors are actually slightly wider than the socket shows on the circuit so what we're doing here is just exposing the MX0 and MX1 those could be used to detect things like position and stuff It's all the connectors. One of the one of the one of the um, things that I'm trying to achieve trying to achieve by using tiles is to increase the surface area on which we can put connectors. So you want a reasonable distance to put your connectors on, and with multiple tiles, you know, so you've got four tiles that gives you four times the amount of space you see here to connect to the outside world. So these will all be pointing away from the board. So it actually gives, gives you a good use of the space around the board to expose your connections. Because um, that's one of the things that's always a problem. Particularly if you do automation stuff or robotics, you've always got lots of stuff coming in and out. You've always got connected what you know wire connectors going connecting from one one connector to a motor or to an actuator or to a switch or to a sensor or to a IR LED or any number of different things so you need good spacing around edges in order to fit in all your connectors so it's nice and neat but it also has to be robust as well so you need a robust connector so these Molinex ones have a um, not only have a polarity but they also click into place they kind of snap into place when you put them in so they don't easily vibrate out um, I may change these finally. I don't know if we want to use those pins, but they're, they're fairly common, fairly good standard. And you can relatively easily crimp cables for them. You can even do it with a pair of pliers if you're um, be careful. Okay, so that's those. So the only thing we're not using on here at the moment is the SPI and the um, STA, STA. I'm not too bothered about not using the ST, STA. But we might want to use the SPI for something. Um, might want to do both. I mean, what we could possibly do is we could add in, for example, some sort of um, gyro or something, maybe. Quite a 
complicated one. Hold on. Uh, gyro and accelerometer. I don't know if this one's still available. Switch back to the schematic. Hold on. So that's a possibility. Uh, something like this. This may be overkill actually. I need to look and see what's available as well. Getting hold of stuff right now is a real pain, I tell you. Stuff I thought I could get uh, last week, I can't get this week. Unbelievable. It's a goddamn nightmare. So this would be, this is ST, STA based. Sorry, I swear C based, should I say. Be more specific. So let's just do that. Let's add this in just for the moment. I'm not sure if this will be the right chip that we're going to use or not at this point. So there's lots of differ, different similar choices. In fact, this has got... And why does that SDO? So you can use this as SPI or S. Ah, you can use this for EVA. Interesting. I should do these. Not sure which way round these would be. I'm guessing that it works something like this. Let's put the labels on so you guys can see what's going on here. So if I was to do this with SPI, then that would be STL SI in here. VS out, I would guess. And that would be clock. Or I could use STA, I'm not sure. If we switch back to the schematic, what would that look like? Yeah, does it make sense to put um, an accelerometer? onto the motor driver board. Damn, that's a small one too. I didn't realise how small that was. Teeny teeny tiny man. Let's go up there. For example. Hmm. I mean, does it make sense, do you think? The only, well, the obvious issue I can think of with going that route is if you were driving more than four PWM motors, four is what we're driving on this board, or more than two stepper motors, um, then you'd end up with an accelerometer on each of the motorboards. So if you had two motorboards, you'd end up with two uh, accelerometers. That might not be such a good idea. Because you definitely wouldn't want two gyro slash accelerometers. By putting the gyro accelerometer on this board, we're assuming you're only ever using one board. That might be a mistake. What other peripherals might we want to put on here? Oh, my chair squeaking again.
Mm. I'm going to leave that for a bit. Let's just root these quickly. It's easy to do so. Might have a little think about that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. How's your CPU going? Um, I post. Oh, I hate it when it defaults to that. <laughs> oh wow, what happened here? Mm. Damn it. So I post says the acceleration need to be used for curves and braking. Yeah. I finally finished an enhancement by adding a vector boot sequence. Thought it was something meaningful for a video series. While I learn the black ice, I'm writing a script for the first episode. I would like to cover them both on the series. That's gonna be cool, I post. I can't wait to see that. Count me in to your video stream. Well, I may have just had some uh, frame drop there. I just got a message from OBS. Apologies, folks. Does that intermittently.
uh, my frame rate here. Yeah, well, I seem to have got disconnected. It's having trouble reconnecting for some reason. Let me just check my modem. A series of disconnections. Can you hear me, folks? Should be back up now. That was weird. Come on, going up and down. Oh dear, we have internet connection issues. We just pause for a sec. Don't know why it's doing that. Hmm. Right, let me just switch. Let me just go and check the modem because I don't quite understand. What is going on here? Um, let me put something up here.
keep definitely up with this. Uh, just slight pause. I'm just going to check the um, connection. Back again. I think it's back up now. Still reconnecting. That's rather annoying. Um, just while it's doing that, see if it comes back up. If not, I will um, finish this in the morrow. We're reconnected. See if it can stay up. I think we're still running. Um, so the other thing I was just wiring on here was the uh, mix signals lines MX0 and MX1. Um, we also will need to do the um, 
power. I normally just do a plane for that. Something like this. Power plane. And then what I do is I send that. This signal here is. In fact, that's not going to work. Undo. I need a power plane on the top and the bottom, effectively. For this. I should imagine. Or I can have two stripes. So let's have the. That's positive, right? So. Your polygon like this. Oh, 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 no, 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 it's not going to work because we're using those the underside of those lines. Right, let's change that first. Because we need, well, actually, no, we should be all right with this. So, what we could do is do No, I don't like this. Let me know if you can see me on the stream as well, guys. I know it's been up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have I need this to be underneath, not on top. Let me migrate these. I'm just going to chop these up, actually. What I need to do here is go like that. And then I need to swap towards the top. Like that. Might need to put some protection on those as well, thinking around it. They're going anywhere near motors. Now I can do my poly here. The bottom. Poly. Let me just sort this out. I need to go down as far as here. And then this is the plus signal, I believe. Yeah, the plus. So I'm going to send that to V plus. I'm going to name that layer V plus. That connects it to it marvelously. And then if I do this, do this, should put it in. Why is it filling it in? This.
That is rather strange. There's nothing connected to it properly. E plus, right? If I do this, and then do this, ah, have I changed my settings? Um, the other thing I'm going to need on here are some caps. Sure, but that polyfill is not working. Pretty sure I need the right name, B plus. Hmm. Change. Uh, and we need to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to draw that poly in as well. Hmm, I think my grid is, um, needs a slight improvement. That will be V minus. V minus. Yeah, see it's not connecting. Why isn't it connecting? I'm basically trying to um, add the supply rails in. Okay, well, I'll work that out in a second. And then we need to do one here and that. What's my grid here? 1.2, so yeah, should be much smaller. Let's make it 0.5.
Dun, dun, dun. Going on here. <clears throat> so that's the power done. I need to work out why the poly rails aren't connecting up here. They should be for some reason. Uh, Not be rank, surely. No, because it's not sitting inside a um, another polygon. So I shouldn't need to change the rank. Isn't it? Connecting. Rather strange. Has it been that long since I've done this? I've forgotten how to do it. I don't think so. Maybe it's a naming issue. Should just connect that up. Rather strange. I think. Hmm. I think I might want to make the gyro optional. I mean, it kind of belongs on the most board because you'd be using those combinations, but only if you're using one driver board. I think it might work, but I'll have to have a look to see if they're available as well. Okay, well, I need to work that out. Anyhow, I'm going to finish for now because things keep going a little bit uh, up and down like a yo-yo anyhow on the stream. Uh, it's 10, so I've been streaming for a couple of hours. That will do for today. I'll do a bit more of this next week. Um, and I'll work out what's going on with my polygon cell here. That's odd. But I, I'm doing some stuff. Um, and then we'll continue with tile stuff. Um, probably do the stream a week today, next Wednesday. Probably not before then, because I'm going to be busy. Um, we'll see how we get on, and then we can get these ordered. Uh, I need to get a test board made up as well, so we can just just for testing tiles, not the amalgam, because the amalgam is taking a bit longer than that. Um, but I may set up a tile tester board. Okay, folks, thanks for hanging on with me. Sorry about the uh, frame drops and the disconnect. I don't know what's going on there. It's a bit odd. Maybe it's a Twitch issue. But I will see you again next week. Ciao.